Nigeria. Welcome to Newsline. I am Becky Madujemu. There's so much to see and hear tonight, places to visit, like the Niger River and its commercial importance to the people along the shoreline. And the town in Nigeria, nicknamed after the color of the roofs that dominate the landscape when you get an area view. For the crime stories, Parents get the shock of their lives when they found out who actually kidnapped their daughter. The aftermath of the disappearance of a toddler and the confessions of a female courtist will leave you speechless. Joy Usiago, great to see you, Joy. Great to see you, Becky. A very good evening to you out there and thanks for joining us this evening. Voting has ended in the Malian runoff election that is expected to produce the next president of the country. Foreign Dex correspondent Makut Simon Macham in Bamako reports that the electorate are choosing between two rivals, incumbent President Ibrahim Bobaka Keita and opposition candidate Sumaila Ksisi. <laughs> Malians on Sunday went to the polls for a final vote that determines the next president of the country after the earlier vote on July 29th failed to give any candidate the 50% vote required. The early rains on Sunday restrained some voters from coming out early, but voting situation improved by the day. In some of the centers visited by the head of the ECOWAS election observation mission in Bamako and Kati, 15 kilometers away from the capital city, the process went on without any problem. We are here to witness and so far uh, we think that everything is in accordance of uh, laws of uh, the Republic of Mali and uh, in accordance of international standards. Now for the two candidates, Ibrahim Keita and Sumaila Suse. Malians expect them to solve key issues bordering this country. The, the situation in the country is very, 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 very bad because of the insecurity, the problem of the North Mali, economical problem, instability in the West Africa also. However, reports from other parts of the country will determine whether the reviewed security deployments by the government responded to the disruptions in over 600 polling units in three regions during the first round election. Counting and collation is expected to continue through the night with results expected in a few days' time. From Bamako in Mali, Makut Simon Macham, NTN News. Thank you, Makut. And back in Nigeria, the National Chairman of the All Progressives Congress, Comrade Adams Oshomoli, says he will uphold the doctrine of party discipline and loyalty to effectively project to the people the core values of APC as a party for progressives. This, he notes, is to further justify and demonstrate that APC as a governing party has the capacity to be trusted with the destiny of the nation. Political correspondent Salihu Abdullahi reports. The federal executive under my watch will not seek to encroach on the duties and functions of the legislative and judicial arms of government. The law enforcing authorities will be charged to operate within the constitution. President Muhammadu Buhari at inauguration of the coming of the APC-led administration in the country on May 29, 2015. The All Progressives Congress as a political party has by this assertion by President Muhammadu Buhari affirmed his resoluteness to pursue governance within the confines of democratic tenets as a platform for functional development of the nation. This, the current party chairman, Comrade Adams Oshamole, has continued to reiterate and re-emphasize that the APC does not only believe in democracy, but also practices it. In this direction, Comrade Adams Oshomole re-emphasized that any segment of the party or group or individual party member in any of the institutions of governance or party practice that goes against those ideas of democracy is not eligible to be a member or to continue to be a member or even to occupy public office under the banner of APC. Comrade Adams Oshomole is speaking against the backdrop of what he described as undemocratic development at the Senate in recent time. 
how can the presiding officer arrive at such a conclusion that there was a plan to carry out an illegal impeachment? Until an action takes place, how can you determine the status? If impeachment by itself is unlawful, the act of impeachment, if it is unlawful, then you can probably understand where he's coming from. But the truth is, it is lawful to impeach anyone, including the president of the Senate, including the deputy president of the Senate, if the number required to do so is the 5th of, of September. Meanwhile, about 50 PDP senators were in the Senate. And for effect, they imported hordes of talks that molested one or two of our members that decided in the premises of the Senate. The chairman added that the party will continue to operate, to operate through its representatives at all levels in line with its core vision of upholding the principle of true democratic norms and values. So if APC senators were not in the Senate, and it is PDP senators that were in the Senate, what is the basis of the false claim that there was an attempt to carry out an illegal impeachment? In any case, Saraki is not going to be the first Senate president to be impeached, and I doubt if he's going to be the last. But definitely, he will be impeached according to law and according to democratic norms. The only way Senator Saraki can avoid impeachment is for him to do what is honorable. The party, he notes, will follow due process to reclaim its leadership in the 8th Senate, having the majority lawmakers in Abuja, Salihu Abdullahi, NTA News. A full package of the press conference comes up on the network service of the Nigerian Television Authority, the NTA, at 10 30 p.m. after Newsline. All NTA stations are advised to hook up. In the meantime, former People's Democratic Party PDP chairman in Sokoto State, Abubakar Shehu Tambua, has formally defected to the All Progressives Congress, APC. He announced his defection while receiving the membership card of the APC at his polling unit. Abdul Rahman Usman Jibrila has the details. The former PDP chairman was received by the state party executives and other party stalwarts at Tambua local government area. He was formally received into the APC when he was presented his membership card at the Hausawarlele polling unit, Kaswardaji Ward, in Tambual Town. Addressing his supporters and other party members, Abubakar Shehu Tambual said his decision to defect to the APC was informed by the landmark achievements of the Buhari led administration. The former PDP chairman pledged contributing his best towards realizing the aims and objectives of the present administration for the development of the nation. We refused to decamp and insisted on reform. PDP headquarters was helpless. <laughs> you, you understand? So we had no option other than to decamp. We are not having any grievances. We are not allowed to participate. That's all. A worker show Tambol used the medium to thank people of Tambol local government area and Sokoto State for their continued support towards his aspirations of working for the people. Some parties tell what who spoke at the event reaffirmed their continued support and loyalty to the Buhari administration under the APC for a better nation. In Sokoto, Abraham Swanjibrila, NTA News. And still so, talking politics, the All Progressives Congress, APC, has described as ridiculous the call by reformed All Progressives Congress requesting the Senate President Bukola Saraki to declare the seat of Senator Gatswil Akpabio vacant. A statement by the National Publicity Secretary of the APC, Yekini Nabena, says that the statement should not be given any attention or credence. The APC says its position is that the Senate president honorably steps down or be impeached. 
The statement further reiterates that the Senate president, being a member of the People's Democratic Party, in an all-progressive Congress, APC numerically dominated Senate, cannot maintain a minority rule in the upper house. Winners have been declared in the by-elections held on Saturday in three states of the Federation. Ismail Musa has details of the results. The turning officer for Kasena North Senatorial District, Professor Hudu Abdullahi, has declared all Progressive Congress APC candidate Ahmed Baba Keita as the winner of the by-election held on Sunday. Correspondent Adu Ali reports that the APC candidate scored 224,607 votes to defeat his brother, Kabir Baba Keita of People's Democratic Party, PDP, who got 59,724 votes. Ahmed Baba Keita of APC, having satisfied the requirements of the law and scored the highest number of votes, is hereby declared the winner and is returned elected. Similarly, INEC has declared Haruna Isa of the All Progressive Congress, APC, as the winner of the by-election for Lukoja Kogi Federal Constituency with a total of 26,860 votes. Haruna Isa of APC, having satisfied the requirements of the law and scored the highest number of votes, is hereby declared the winner. And from Bauchi, Abbas Mekano reports that Lawan Liahayagumau was declared winner in the Bauchi South Senatorial by-election after pulling 119,489 votes. Lawali Ahaya of APC, having satisfied the requirements of the law and scored the highest number of votes, is hereby declared, declared the winner and is returned elected. The All Progressives Congress felicitates with immediate past national chairman Chief John Odige Oyegun on his 79th birthday. A statement from the acting national publicity secretary of the party, Yekini Nabane, described Chief Oyegun as a man of many positive roles who distinguished himself during his work in the civil service, where he rose to become one of the country's youngest permanent secretaries. The statement says Chief Oyegun also served as first elected governor of Edo State and played a major role in ousting the military junta as one of the pro-democracy activists. As the first elected APC national chairman, he led the party to victory, ousting the failed PDP 16 years reign in Nigeria. It states that Chief Odigeo Yegun, in his general conduct, progressive and patriotic devotion to duty, has earned the title of an elder statesman. In the meantime, the federal government has assured Nigerians that following the importance of the Executive Order 5 recently signed by President Buhari, a law will soon be made to institutionalize the order to ensure its content and implementation are not altered after this administration for the rapid development of the country. Minister of Science and Technology Dr. Ogunaya Ono confirmed and execution of Nigeria's content in contracts and science, engineering and technology. Justin Bem Uye reports. The reason it became absolutely necessary for the order to come up now, the minister reiterated, is because it is important Nigeria starts producing, manufacturing, innovating and managing her technological and scientific developments to stop importation. The minister wants Nigerians to see the importance of the order and own it as well as live it. And generation. It affects the lives of all Nigerians. This order, if implemented, can dis determine for us tomorrow the value of our currency. It can help us solve the problem of unemployment. It can create wealth for us. It can help us grow the economy. Small-scale industries will emerge everywhere. 
He encouraged Nigerians to be self-confident as the nation has the best of intelligence in the world and that the federal government aims at bringing the intelligence to use in the country in making a measurable progress in development. Other related professionals, as well as the general public, were invited for the North Central Dialogue on Executive Order 5, which directs that procuring entities shall give preference to Nigerian companies and firms in the award of contracts in line with Public Procurement Act 2007. Justin Bemunyi, NTA News. Now, the provision of basic amenities by any government is no doubt a deliberate policy aimed at enhancing the livelihood of the people. To this end, the people of Adamawa State have benefited from the federal government's erosion and flood control projects in some communities in Ola North and Ghani local government through the Ecological Fund Office. Simon Asher reports. Before the intervention of the present administration, the roads that linked up Dabra, Ganwi, Daksami, Novena to Ganyan Mentam and Kanasi, Gidankowa, among others that connect Ganyan Town to your village were in bad condition and the worst lack of culverts and drainage system, thereby making movement difficult to the people. The situation had in the past turned the people to untold hardship because of the incessant flooding during rainy season. However, the narrative has changed for the visionary initiative of the Buhari administration. So far, roads have been constructed with culverts and drainages built to control the minerals of erosion and flooding to alleviate the difficulties of the people. Inaugurating and unveiling the fleets of projects to include Bagale Kofari Erosion Control Work in Yola Nut, President Muhammad Buhari, represented by the Minister of Health, Professor Isaac Adewole, says 56 similar projects have also been commissioned across the country, bringing the desired change needed in the nation. And what this is showing is the commitment of a, a leader who promises and has made every effort to ensure that those promises are kept. The determination of Mr. President is to ensure that the dividends of democracy are brought closer to our people. And when he promises, he delivers. Other speakers on the occasion urged the benefiting communities to take good care of the projects to ensure its sustainability for the betterment of the society. In Yola, Simon Asher, NCA News. 12th August every year is International Youth Day, a day set aside to celebrate the role and contributions of youths as essential partners in nation building and raise awareness on the challenges they face globally. Olainka Ojo in this report takes a look at this year's theme, which is Save Space for Youth. Nations General Assembly in 1999 first designated 12th August as International Youth Day. UN statistics indicate that there are currently 1.8 billion young people between the ages of 15 and 24 in the world. But 1 in 10 of the world's children live in conflict zones and 24 million of them are out of school. Political instability Labor market challenges and limited space for political and civic participation have led to the increasing isolation of youths in the society. This is why the United Nations Secretary General Antonio Guterres in his message said, the hope of the world rests on young people. I believe in the power of young people. Peace, economic dynamism, social justice, tolerance, all these and more depends on tapping into the potential of youth. With the theme, Safe Space for Youth, young people need safe spaces where they can come together, engage in activities related to their diverse needs and interests through participation in decision-making processes. We need to first orient ourselves. We need to understand what we as, we as nation builders are supposed to be doing. We need to give people um, somewhere to express themselves. The general consensus of these young people is that when youths have safe spaces to engage, they can effectively contribute to national development, including building peace and social cohesion. Olainka Ujo, NTA News.
and still focusing on young people, youth empowering programs should go beyond providing means of livelihood to include intergovernmental equity and youth involvement in community decision making in order to impact positively on societal development. This was the focus of the Youth Empowerment Scheme flag off by NASFAT Society in Abuja. Ali Tuko reports. From the Life has family. not been easy for Ayanlo Najim Din, a 34 year old graduate of physics mathematics who could not find a white collar job since graduating from higher institution. But with the Nasfat Society Youth Empowerment Scheme, Najim Din, who is among the 72 youths trained in various fields, can now earn a living having been trained on fishery. We have 200, uh, 2,000 fishes in, our, in the pond, right now as I'm saying, and they are a month, three, more, uh, three weeks old. Um, I really appreciate NASFAT for giving us this kind of... The scheme which is stuck, empower the youth, secure the nation, is aimed at not only providing means of livelihood to the youth, but also to overcome social barriers while recognizing the importance of self-directed learning. And empower them that tomorrow they can stand on their own to empower others too. Ayan Lo, Najim Din, and the other 71 beneficiaries who were trained in ICT, fashion designing, cosmetology, farming, and bakery can now start up their ventures as they have also received equipment to help them do so. In Abuja, Ali Utukur, NTA News. The wife of the President Aisha Buhari has arrived to Seoul, the capital of Korea, Sunday afternoon, ahead of a conferment with an honorary doctorate degree in humanity by Sun Moon University in recognition of her contributions to humanity. Mrs. Buhari will also receive a World Leadership Award at Ajong University, Swan in Korea, and will commission a multimedia hall named after her in the same university. State House correspondent Ali Tuko reports. On her arrival, the wife of the president, Aisha Muhammad Buhari, was received by the Nigerian ambassador to the Republic of Korea, Aminu Muhammad Alatu, alongside his wife, Yasmin. The management of Sun Moon University was also at hand to receive the wife of the president, led by their chair, Mr. Chan Chul Lee. Also at the airport to greet the wife of the president were the spouses of the staff of the Nigerian mission to Korea and thereafter was welcomed by some of the ambassadors of other African countries and their spouses comprising Zambia, Egypt, Cote d'Ivoire, Ghana and the wife of the Nigerian ambassador to the People's Republic of China in a solidarity. Looking at the face of the wife of the president, her happiness knows no bound. Mohamed Aminu Dalatu is the Nigerian ambassador to the Republic of Korea. The Nigerian mission in Seoul, Dr. Aisha Buhari, who is in Korea to receive awards from prominent Korean universities. This is an honor not only to her person, to the entire Nigerian nation. The program is expected to commence on Monday. In Seoul, the Republic of Korea, Ali Kabir, NTA News. And back here in Nigeria, Christian leaders in the country have been reminded of their roles as the conscience of the nation with a call to action to continue to promote the ideals that unite and reflect on the state of the nation while also praying for the government. President Muhammad Buhari, who was represented at the 23rd General Assembly of the Presbyterian Church, Fred Oyoita stressed the need for religious tolerance, love, and unity of the nation. He described the Presbyterian Church as a pivotal agent of change with tremendous contributions in the agricultural, educational, and other socioeconomic subsectors. We know that 
the teaching of our Lord Jesus Christ is based basically on two commandments. First of all, you love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your might. And then secondly, you love your neighbor as yourself. And once you as a Christian stand on these two commandments, you have obeyed all the commandments of Moses and indeed even the law of your country. Governor of Akwa Ibom State, Deacon Udom Emmanuel, represented by the Commissioner for Women Affairs, Dr. Glory Edith, was also at hand to present a keynote address on the theme, Living by the Word of God. Other participants at the General Assembly called for a return to a corrupt free country with high national values. In the security situation in Nigeria, we all hands must be on, neck, on deck. As a country and as a government, we are not in any manner celebrating the situation. It of killing, destroying what you cannot produce, we reject that. As a church, we really mourn for those whose lost ones have just, their life have just been quenched. The 23rd General Assembly coincided with the 172 years of existence of the Presbyterian Church of Nigeria and featured awards to various personalities, including the Chief of Naval Staff, Vice Admiral Ibok Etibas. In Calabar, Umo Basidate, NT News. And talking sports now, Nigeria's Arna Kodri beats Anthony Hatchard of France in the ITTF Challenge Open Men's Final as Nigeria men's rugby team returns to the international scene with big win over Nigeria Republic. These and more on Sports Update with G